four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. And that poor President Lincoln rendered the ceremonies ludicrous the by his sallies. No Anything more dull and here. commonplace, it wouldn't but be it easy to produce. They did here. The persons, if there be any and such, to whom such jargon can appear impressive or even intelligible, must have faculties and tastes of which we can form no idea. So it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. His message is the most truly American message ever delivered. Wonderfully acute, simple, sagacious, and of antique honesty. I can forgive the jokes and the big hands and the inability to make bows. Some of us who doubted were wrong. This people is not rotten. What the young men dream, the old men shall see. The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves, and we shall save our country. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generations. In giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free, honorable alike in what we give and in what we preserve. We shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope of earth. November 16th, 1864. General Sherman marched out of Atlanta. General Sherman with 60,000 men marched out of Atlanta, down to the sea. A just obedience to the laws of the United States, that we will have. Frost on the cotton, smoke in the air, red fighting cocks on a thousand clanging caissons. In the gunmetal dawn, the crisp red dawn, out of Atlanta, down to the sea. the white-topped wagons. Load up the wagons with all they'll hold. Cornmeal and silver, yams and gold, peanuts and quilts on the red clay roads. split rail fences, Father Abraham. Georgia has split rail fences too. And Georgia has cold blankets, Father Abraham. Georgia has cold blankets and red clay boots to clog a thousand fence rows. 
bayonets spiked in the hillside, wedged between the great black teeth of charred wagon spokes. Sixty miles wide and five times as long. The destruction could not have been greater if Atlanta had been a volcano in eruption and the molten lava had flowed in a stream sixty miles wide and five times as long. Where are your rice shoots, South? Where are your corn stalks, rebels? Where are your cotton seeds, Confederates? Only the geese, the wild geese honking over the once green fields, now black. Not like the black prairie soil of Illinois, not like the black oak trunks of Wisconsin, dead black, dead black. But for the smoldering campfire and the white smoke riding the land, There is the frost tonight, blossoming clear, geometrical, impartial, set like diamonds in the hard black rocks, the hard black rocks that once were chimneys. A bed? What was a bed? Brass, but black, black brass. No one will sleep there tonight. No one will lie with his love on that feather bed. No, listen to the rain, rain down. There is no roof, no walls, no chairs, no quilts, no gleaming candlesticks, no riding boots, no ivory combs. There is nothing but black, Father Abraham. Nothing but the staring black crows. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphans, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Dear sir, I only wish to thank you for being so good and to say how sorry we all are that you must have four more years of this terrible toil. But remember what a triumph it is for the right. What a blessing to the country. And then your rest shall be glorious when it does come. You can't tell anything about it in Washington where they make a noise on the slightest provocation. But if you had been in this little speck of a village this morning and heard the soft, sweet music of unseen bells rippling through the morning silence from every quarter of the far-off horizon, you would better have known what your name is to this nation. May God help you in the future as he has helped you in the past and a people's love and gratitude will be but a small portion of your exceeding great reward 
Most respectfully, Mary A. Dodge, Hamilton, Massachusetts. Stanton, Ted wants some flags. Can he be accommodated? General Lee has this morning surrendered the Army of Northern Virginia under terms proposed by myself. General U. S. Grant. Philadelphia, back through New York, up the drowned Hudson, against the tide, the train rolls back. Past the apple blossoms and the lilacs, Fine country, still sleeping in the April frost, still sleeping by the ice-bound lakes. Columbus and Richmond, Indiana, back to the open skies, back to the tall grass of Illinois. Cutting across the small towns of hickory, maple, and tall elm trees. Stands. Silent now in green squares. Let the past as nothing be. Go it while you're young. with guns. Back through the Union, the train rolls on. What's your cargo, iron ship? What's your clanging song? what great principle or idea it was that kept this confederacy together so long. It was not the mere matter of separation of the colonies from the mother country, but that something in the Declaration of Independence giving liberty, not alone to the people of this country, but hope for all future time. It was that which gave promise that in due time, 
the weights should be lifted from the shoulders of all men and that all should have an equal chance. It is we who are dead, Father Abraham. It is we who are dead, who toll the bells with our own cold tears, our ice-locked tears, until the purple air will hold no more, until the wild black earth will receive no more. It held, Mr. Lincoln. It held. In your hands it flamed up over the shoddy blue coats and the leaking tents, fed with the faggots of a million campfires, in a slow curve, like a comet, high across the prairie sky, arcing the gap, trailing sparks no slave-bound heart could strike. And we know what we always knew, what every age, what every man must find in his own green heart. If fear's teeth be blunted, love's eyes may open and ears may hear. Crusted arteries, laying bare the quivering nerves of fear that signals separation of white from black, rich from poor, north from south, slave from master, man from woman, nation from nation, and friend from friend. For we are what we always knew was possible, but never could say. We never could remember, Mr. Lincoln, what no bullets, no bayonets could kill. When Abraham Lincoln lived in Illinois, he rode the circuit out over the plains with a big, blue-stemmed grass bent in the sun. And in the spring, the rains came down, down through an ocean of silent sky, down on the green prairie heart of Illinois. 